So as I was going through the slides in the last module on the active voice, I might have raised a question for some of you that you might want me to address. Whenever I talk about the active voice, I always get the question from students, well, I've been told that I'm not supposed to use we or I. I'm not supposed to use personal pronouns in my scientific manuscript. And of course, to use the active voice, often you need to use we or I. So you might be wondering, is it really okay if I use we or I in my scientific manuscript, in my scientific writing? And I'm here to tell you, yes, it's okay to use we and I. So if you've learned somewhere along the way, somebody told you personal pronouns are not okay, I'm going to try to convince you otherwise. And there's several reasons why I think we and I are, are perfectly fine to use in scientific writing and other formal writing. So probably the, the biggest reason is just simply that to use the active voice, you usually have to write with we or I. Now there are ways you could use the pronoun one, for example. Um, but that's sometimes a little awkward as well. So in general, to in order to use the active voice in your uh, scientific writing, you're probably going to have to use we or I. And the active voice is just, it's livelier, it's easier to read. I'm really going to encourage you to use the active voice. So that's probably the primary reason where I'm going to say it's okay to use we and I. There's other reasons too. So uh, another reason why it, it, I think it's okay is that the reason I think this prohibition against first person pronouns probably crept in is there was this idea that somehow if you take the we or I, you take the you know, yourself out of the manuscript, that it would somehow lend the manuscript objectivity. And really I think this is just a myth. It doesn't make the uh, manuscript more objective, right, if you uh, pretend that you weren't involved in the experiments and the interpretation of the data, because of course you or your team ran those experiments, you interpreted that data, and you know, putting it in the passive voice, the data were interpreted to show, makes it sound as if those experiments, that interpretation just kind of, you know, came on from a pie, and uh, obviously that's not what happened. So I think it's actually not only not more objective, but it, if it's a little bit misleading, right, because you're not uh, admitting the fact that it's, you're the person who did the experiments. There's always going to be subjectivity when you do experiments, when you interpret data. And so you want to go ahead and admit that there is subjectivity. We did this, I did this, this is what I think I see in the data, this is what we think we see in the data. So I think it's more transparent if you use we and I. And then finally, another re really important reason I think for going ahead and using we or I on your paper is that when you agree to be an author on the paper, you're putting your name there as an author, you are taking public responsibility for its content. So I think when you use we and I in the writing of the, the body of the paper, it kind of just acknowledges the fact that yes, you're taking public responsibility for that content. So go ahead and claim responsibility. Uh, and that'll kind of remind you as you're writing the manuscript or editing the manuscript that you are taking responsibility. So go ahead and use we or I and claim that responsibility. Now, maybe you're not convinced by any of those reasons, so I'm going to give you a much more practical reason why you want to use we or I. And that's simply that this is what journals actually want you to do. So journal editors recognize that the active voice is much easier to read, uh, and they want people to read their magazines, their journals. So the style guidelines for many journals actually explicitly will tell you to write in the active voice. So let's go, for example, to the style guidelines from Science Magazine. They say right there, use the active voice when suitable, particularly when necessary for correct syntax. For example, to address this possibility, we constructed a Lambda Zap library. So you can see that they're actually directly telling you to go ahead and use we or I. Uh, it's kind of fun to go to these style guidelines for some of these journals. So like if we open up the style guidelines for Science Magazine, you'll notice that they uh, point out a couple of things that we've been already talking about in this course. So when they're telling authors how they want you to write, they say things like avoid jargon, which we talked about last week. Use the active voice, use we. They tell you to write concisely, use even though, rather than in spite of the fact that exactly what we talked about last week. So editors of journals really do want you to write in this way. And then finally, I can point you to some examples of great papers that did use we and I. And so here's a, a great example. Watson and Crick's celebrated 1953 paper in Nature, where they give the structure for DNA. The very first sentence of that paper begins, 
we wish to suggest a structure for the salt of deoxyribose nucleic acid. So they start right off with the we. Um, and this is a great paper to look at if you have a chance. I've uh, put the link in here. This is a very famous paper, obviously, because the scientific discovery is so important. But not only that, it's a very well written paper. It's in the active voice, it's lively, it's concise, it's easy to understand their take home messages. They made the implications immediately obvious. So uh, that's a, besides the you know, actual fundamental discovery, the paper itself is really quite remarkable. And if you look carefully at that paper, you'll notice that they use we quite a bit. We wish to suggest, we believe, we wish to put forward. So it'd be worth your while to go ahead if you got a chance and read through that paper. It's a very short one. One last question you might have, I'm talking about the active versus the passive voice. You might be wondering now, is it ever okay for me to use the passive voice, or do I always have to use the active voice? So uh, no, there are instances where it's perfectly fine to use the passive voice. So I'm gonna encourage you for the most part to use the active voice. So when you're writing your abstract, your introduction, your results, and your discussion, I'm gonna encourage you to use the active voice. However, I think there's one section where it's probably just fine and maybe even preferable to use the passive voice, which is in the method section. So the passive voice definitely exists in the English language for a reason, and so there are instances where it is okay to use it, and I think in scientific writing, probably the method section is the best example. So I would tell you it's fine to use in the method section for a couple of reasons. So one reason is that in the method section, it's actually more important what was done. The action and the object of the verb is actually more important than who did it. We don't really care that you, the experimenter, did it. We know that from the fact that you're on the paper. But for the method section, which is supposed to read kind of like a, a recipe and tell you exactly what was done, the what was done part is the important part. So the passive voice actually emphasizes that by putting the object first. So that's one reason. A second reason is that the method section is in fact not a section that most people are expecting to be titillating prose. Most people are okay with the idea that you're not going to read the prose section word for word and paragraph for paragraph. Most readers actually just tend to skim the method section for keywords. So they're not expecting it to be the most exciting prose and it's probably not worth your time to make that section the most lively. You can assume that your reader's not going to really sit there and read it as prose. They're going to kind of skim it. So putting it in the passive voice then isn't so bad because it doesn't have to be the best prose ever. And then finally, you know, if you were to try to put the method section in the active voice, and some people do, um, it's a little bit hard to avoid using we or I at the start of every sentence. Now you can do it, you just have to be a little bit creative. The problem is that I don't think it's quite worth all of that effort. Again, since most readers aren't reading this as prose, they're just kind of skimming it, it's probably not worth you putting all this effort to make your method section into the active voice and find creative ways to get around using we and I at the start of every sentence. You're better off investing that, el that uh, effort elsewhere in the manuscript. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University please visit us at med.stanford.edu.